This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Life Mastery with Todd Allen, the talk radio show that dives into the science of higher consciousness. Join Todd and his guests weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific Time and learn how to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery. Enjoy a survey of inspiring topics such as abundance, intention, health, manifestation, love, and transformation. It's all right here. Leading authors, speakers, coaches, entrepreneurs with stories and messages to support your well-being, let alone your most evocative of dreams. Hey, 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 it's another groovy day because you most of you know, but I'll tell you anyway, I make it that way. When I get up in the morning before my feet hit the ground, I'd already decided it's a groovy day and I get going. And then if anything else happens during the day, I always think back. I started it out groovy. It can be groovy again. Deal with the challenge and move. And you know what? It just magically happens. It's pretty cool. Life Mastery Radio, a talk show that brings you great thoughts and ideas for you to use on your very own Life Mastery journey. Before we get started, I always like to just take a minute, and I'm sure my guest will appreciate this today. I like to take a minute and get myself centered and situated and relaxed and ready for some great content. And let's, let's take in a deep breath all the way down. And I want you to think about what it is that you connect to. What it is it that you connect to that gives you power, that gives you solace, infinite possibilities? What is that connection? Think about that for a minute. Deep breath all the way down and now just let that breath out with a big ah uh, just let that flow up through your heart center throat chakra out of your speaker box and out into the universe and think about that connection connect to it uh, let's do that one more time in with a deep breath and think about those dreams visions and goals what is it that you aspire to do be and have in with a deep breath. And another big ah. Uh, let those dreams, visions, and goals flow out of your speaker box out into the universe. Uh, and that here's the deal. Allow the universe the opportunity to make those come true for you. Head up, tail out from between your legs, just like a little puppy dog, ready to take on the world. That's the way it works. And those possibilities, those, those opportunities will come your way. That's the way it works. Try it. You'll like it. Hi, Jackie. Hello. Welcome to the show. You kind of <laughs> kind of got off to a little, little bit of a bump. I don't even want to give energy to a bumpy start. We're we're just grooving and things are happening. Our our guest, our guest was thinking our show was tomorrow, but no, it's today. <laughs> Maybe we should have a show two times a week. Who knows? Maybe it's a sign. <laughs> every, every day. Right? Could, could we do a show every day? That would be, you know, these people that do it, it's just, it, it would take a lot of work to, and, and to do a three hour podcast every day. Can you imagine? Yeah, it would take, a. I think the prep time would be more than the actual show time, right? Because the okay. show time is, is fun. It's, it's where you connect with your guests and, and you get to learn information, but it's the prep before that that I think would probably take all day, right? <laughs> right. But but here's here's the deal: if somebody offered me a hundred million dollars to do that, I think I would. I think, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, think about the team of people that could do all that prep work for you, right? It's kind of oh, like the Martha Stewart thing where she was. Like, okay, now you add this and that. And all of a sudden you have, I'm thinking, you've got tons of people behind the scenes right there getting all this stuff together for you. All you're doing is putting it in the oven and taking it back out. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that would be, that would be amazing. I want to remind our listeners today that the, today's show page is at www.lifemasteryradio.net or .com. 
you can go there and any links that we talk about on the show today will be right there. We have a really nice write-up about our guest and, and her links to her website. And while you're there, you can sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter goes out once a week. Jackie spends a lot of time figuring that out and putting that all together and it highlights who's been on the show, who's coming on the show. And she always has a blog post about the show that we just did. And yeah, I was talking about that interview. prep time. <laughs> well, yeah, you spend, you spend some good, good amount of time getting that already, but it's just phenomenal. And it's, you know, you can sign up for the newsletter. That's all we use that email address for. And it goes out once a week and it keeps you up to date with all things like mastery. Let's see, what else do we, oh, check out our books. Jackie might have her book there. Here's my book. You can follow the links to Six Keys to Life Mastery and Jackie's book. Self-Centered Leadership, Self Becoming Influential, Intentional, and Exceptional. Both, <laughs> both really good books. Grab them. You'll read them. You'll love them. And then... Give us some love, right? Oh, give, us some <laughs> give us some feedback and let us know what you think. Okay, Jackie, what am I forgetting? How's things at the Speak, Feed, Lead org project? Keeping our heads above water. <laughs> doing our best. Got that dog paddle going pretty well. <laughs> well, the kids so, are back in school. Are you seeing a little more activity? Not quite yet. Not quite yet. There's, there's a little bit of interest, but no one's committed right yet. Yeah, so, we're trying to figure it out. People are trying to figure it out. They're not sure about what the next couple months are going to hold. And I think most people are just waiting to see what happens in January. So that's kind of the pattern we're in as well. It's just like, well, hopefully January is going to be good, but never know. And your husband's <laughs> been on the road. He's, he's the lead guitar for, get this, Paul Revere and the Raiders, which is pretty cool. And he's yeah. been up in Alaska. That's kind of cool. They are on tour in Alaska. They've been in Fairbanks, Kenai, and Juneau. I think they've got a show tonight and another show tomorrow night, I think. Yeah. Big shout out to Arnie Bailey. It, you know, I, I see his Facebook post and it seems like he's just having an absolute blast. He says it is quite an adventure and having fun. Beautiful country. Been cold in the 20s, though. That's big cold. Audiences. I think big audiences get him going, right? Well, and I think there's a lot of people in Alaska that love live music. I oh, mean, when you think okay. about living out there, there's, you know, there's miles and miles between different cities. So they got to have something to look forward to. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. No, I'm no, no, I that. totally get it. I worked with there for, for a little while, on and off, but yeah. that's the way it is. It's so remote, and yeah. you have these little villages, and it's just amazing. And if a live band comes, oh, yeah, everybody's there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. we're having fun. Okay, <laughs> I think that we are ready for the show, and today right. it's a really big show. And really big shoe for you <laughs> and we're going to be talking money 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 we're going to be talking wealth. we're going to be talking happiness and how to have all of the above so this um, is your guest yeah so let this me introduce your guest, to you so it's your intro yeah heather abbott and since a very young age heather has strived to be self-sufficient and has spent most of her life as an entrepreneur Along the way, she got a business degree, raised two children, became a CPA and a financial advisor. And most importantly, she says she gained her freedom from a severely mentally abusive marriage. She is now combining her gifts of uplifting others and being a natural coach with her knowledge, education, and experience into a purpose-driven career. She helps people to reach true prosperity, wealth, and joy in their lives with her support so that they do not have to struggle as she did and doing it alone. So the last little part she says is she is passionate about empowering you with confidence in your finances and joy in your life. Who doesn't want those? Her passion for this comes from having given her power away, both financially and in her former marriage. 
She can tell you it's far easier to have someone shoot themselves three feet in front of you than to be mentally abused. So she is bringing all of that with her today to share with us how we can find financial freedom and freedom to have joy at the same time. So please welcome our wonderful guest, Heather Abbott. It's great to have you. And you're joining us from somewhere in Canada, right? Nova Scotia, East Coast. Nova Scotia, wow. Yeah, Atlantic time zone that most people have never heard about. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, different yes, there from is Eastern an Standard hour, Time? Yes, I'm an hour different than Eastern. There, You've heard of Bermuda, same time zone. Ah, so what's your weather like way up north? We're actually getting a nor'easter tomorrow. Or actually, mm-hmm. later today it's going to start. So it's actually good that I was wrong in the podcast. Uh, the radio show is today, not tomorrow, because the power might be out tomorrow because most mm-hmm. of the trees still have leaves on them right now. Uh, I don't know. Went through that. Yeah. We oh, just really? went through that. So I think we got it before you did. Not, not that they're common, but I lost power Sunday for about five hours. Where are you? We are in Seattle. Oh, yeah. Washington. Yeah. Okay. You're the wrong coast for it to be coming. To That's me. right. <laughs> but it's oh, not I, a nor'easter just... necessarily, but are you going to have snow with this storm, you think? No, it'll be rain. It'll just be rain and wind. Yeah. Yeah. Rain and wind. And the last time we had it this windy with the leaves still on the trees, there was a significant amount of damage because the trees, those leaves act like sails and it takes down the power lines like crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That happened to me. I live in the woods, kind of in the dingleberries and that's what happens. It rained yeah. and rained and rained. The leaves came down and out goes the power. Well, it seems like just as the fall starts to get beautiful with so many colors on the trees and so forth, we have a big windstorm and bam, all the, all the leaves that. are gone. The fall colors are gone. and They're all on the yeah. ground. I've never that's seen it. so many leaves on the ground. I've been here all my life pretty much. And it's piles and piles everywhere. Maybe I just noticed it, but I don't know that I've noticed it like it is right now. So Well, I can't wait for that because I remember as a young girl, my grandmother had a really big maple tree in her front yard. And I, it was, I was in Phoenix. So we didn't have a lot of deciduous trees, but she did. And so when those leaves came down, it was so fun to go there and pile them all up and then just jump into them. And so I love that part of fall is when the leaves are crispy. It's, it's just the problem is when it's been rainy, then they're not crispy. They're gooey and slippery and not as fun. So anyway, so I Heather, go. <laughs> go ahead, Todd. I was just, I, I was, was just going to say welcome to the show and yeah. we so much appreciate you being here. You have quite a story and you you, like Jackie and I, you're into service work, empowering others. That's what this show is all about. If we can make a difference in one person's life, then we did our job for today. But at least at least plant the seeds to help them. Yeah. So, so maybe to start off, describe for us, you know, I watched some of your YouTube videos. And I, I guess the first question that comes to my mind, can everybody be a millionaire? Yes. That was Definitely. Clear. How many steps does it take? Is it like a hundred (laughs) steps? It's one of those things where you get to see the first step and you don't get to see any more of them until you take the first one. Oh, I see. And yet you can't, you can't see it. You don't know, but you take the first step, you take the second step. You just have to trust. But yeah, it, everybody, anybody can be a millionaire. That's funny that you say that because I was, I was given the visual. It's like, it's like having a pair of slippers with candles on the tips and, and you're in the dark, right? <laughs> okay. So you, you take a step, you take a step and then you can see where to put the next step and then you can see. Did we change it to like an electric light? Yeah, so that, that was such a strange fire? visual. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess in ancient times, they would put lanterns on their feet so they could see where they were going or something to that effect anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about fire on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a so Heather, before you tell us then what you think that first step is toward joy and wealth, tell us where you've been, where maybe you could not even see that first step in your life. Tell us where you started or, or, or what life threw at you to begin with that 
that allowed you this inspiration to find something better? Oh, I mean, I could, there, there's examples up the wazoo. I remember one time when I had two credit cards and I went to the bank and made a payment, the minimum payment on one credit card and then used the space available on that card to pay the other card. Oh my God. And then used the space available on that card to go get groceries. Wow. Oh, you are reminding me of so many stories here. I got to tell you this one. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a business owner and I own a small machine shop. And when I first started thing, it was difficult. It wasn't easy, but I just kept taking that step and that step. And one day I couldn't make payroll. Mm. And I was just panicked. And, but I had a credit card that had a $10,000 credit line on it. So I walked up to my credit card machine and I ran it and it went through. <laughs> and, and the next day, and I was expecting some big checks to come in. And the next day that the credit card company called me and says, we see that you had a $10,000 transaction. It was that you? And I said, yeah. And, and I told them what I did and they said, well, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I did. And I've already paid it back. So wow, <laughs> I know. I don't think you can get away with that today. There's just yeah, no that's funny. Magic happened, I guess. <laughs> well, it's that pros it's that prosperity mindset, right, Heather? I mean, it's it's it knowing is. And actually, when Jackie said, "What's the first step?" I was going to defer to you because you already did it. <laughs> you already said it on the show. I set the intention for the day when I get up. Hell yeah, that's number one. You have to believe that you can do it and you have to know that you create your life you're in charge set your day don't let people knock you off of that don't get up saying where was I last night when I went to sleep and what was on that to-do list and who wants what for me no 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 you have to say this is my day and I am going to wait and see what kind of miracles are in store for me today what you got for me today universe like bring it on and you get out of bed with that attitude and just, just like Tava said, go back to it. If you find yourself off that, go meditate, have a nap. That's the best way. Once you got the momentum going in any direction you want, you need to catch it as soon as you can. It, and I challenge people to actually set a timer on your phone for 60 seconds, like one minute. Close your eyes and think nothing but positive thoughts. Hmm. Jackie That's does that. Jackie has... Jackie has an app that she's created. It's her own wisdom. And it's, what is it? Possibility. It's called Positive Prime. It's, it's actually not, <clears throat> it's not my app necessarily, but I have a session I've created on the app for my students that encourages them to have positive thoughts when it comes That's to speaking cool. and communicating and that kind of thing. Uh, and so it does. It, Scientifically proven that just by watching a session for three minutes, you get six to eight hours of positive attitude and thinking. And but it's but for me, Heather, it's really easy to get knocked down. Even when I start my day with good intentions, for instance, I'll share something a little personal here. Um, I was having a pretty good day amidst some challenges that we're facing with my nonprofit. And I sent an email to a few people I felt could support us and help us. One of the replies that I got from a very famous, very wealthy marketing guru was cruel and mean. And he told me never to contact him again. And it really set me back. I mean, it was hard to recover from that I don't even want to say it was a crush of my ego. I think it felt more than that. It was almost like he was punching all my students in the stomach or something. Like, I don't want to help you. I don't want to help these kids. I don't, I don't want to care about these kids. And, um, and so it's, it's been, it's kind of affected me for the last couple of days. And I felt less positive <laughs> than yeah. I would like to. And it's really hard to overcome those things. And I know that you've been in a situation where you have been mentally affected by abusive language. So a situation how, implies that that was like a, we're talking a 25 year long situation. Right. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, how do you deal with that every day and still maintain some sense of I'm going to get through this? Oh, geez. 
um, one of my coping mechanisms I used to have back then was uh, have, you've se have you heard, you've seen Gone with the Wind maybe mm -hmm. maybe you've heard of it oh do that impression I that, I, I saw that this morning that was so cute <laughs> well Scarlett O'Hara in the film after she shoots a man she goes oh I can't deal with that now if I think about that now I'll go crazy <laughs> oh, I'll think about that tomorrow and that. <laughs> I think about it tomorrow. It just it's denial, absolute denial all through that. I did not admit I was mentally abused until four mm. months after he was dead. Mm. Right. Wow. So no, it's denial. And I am an optimist. I will see the bright thing. The transmission went in the car, and I could have told you six things off the top of my head that were good about the way it went. Like you know, there was, oh no, but I got a quote. So it was only 2000 instead of 3000. It would have been if I hadn't got the quote first mm. and it was near the shop when it broke down. So the tow truck didn't have to take it very far. Oh yeah. No, I am total. I can, I can see that silver lining in a cloud. Like, like, I don't know. It's just, I like sparkly things. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a practice. So maybe describe that practice of being in that mindset, because that is big. When Jackie was describing mm -hmm. her ail ailment, or her is, well, you have to recognize first that yes, the the there's two there's a couple things here. One is the energy that you're feeling isn't it's it's partly your reaction, but it's partly the energy that went into the message when it was sent to you, mm. because you you picked up on that. Right. And whether you consciously know it or not, we're all affected by the energy around us. So, I mean, there was a plant in my house. You've seen a Christmas cactus before, how they, they always stand up. Mm -hmm. It laid on the pot. Oh, it, 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 I, I used toothpicks, like I, not toothpicks, <laughs> popsicle sticks and wires to try and prop it up. But it laid on the pot because the energy in the house was so oh, negative so i gave the plant away afterward to my friend and it's happy as anything girl stands right <laughs> up now but no i the plants would not so wow. yes i had what i call the happy bubble do not poke it right but i mean he was constantly poking it and it was it's very hard my uh, a friend of mine who is very sensitive she's a psychic and a medium she said it, she couldn't even see me most of the time if she tried to look energetically because I had a shroud wow. around me just a protection mm -hmm. so you have to learn to shield yourself emotionally denial will play a part because you know it's and that's not a great way because you're gonna have to deal with that later which I have but I worked at it constantly I was always, I was, if it was published by Hay House, I likely had it, <laughs> read it. <laughs> I listened to Hay House radio. Like I was working on it. There was, there were very few summits at that time that I knew of, but there were a couple like, and there were things about um, grounding like, or, or I forget what the earth thing they call that. You go outside and like lay on a tree or, or mm -hmm. lay on the ground, like getting connection and there are so many methods and that when I work with people I, I will like I have all kinds of things that I'll bring out but I've I've been through like um, so many things designed to clear blocks and clear blocks and I worked and I worked and I worked it is a practice that you have to have it's a habit you have to build it's like building a muscle you will event the more you do it the stronger the muscle will get. And yes, people will come to push you over, but the stronger your muscles you are, the more you can stay where you are. And having good people you can surround yourself with, people like when if one of my friends was in your situation, they would have called me by now. They'd be feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm calling you. <laughs> Go ahead. That is, that is a big part of it is having somebody that you can trust to just talk it through and and they don't even have to give you answers right it's just um, merely allowing yourself to voice it and maybe even look for that gift right that's what, something that i was taught what's the gift where's the gift i'm looking for the that gift. there now you're getting it but if you're talking about the problem you're increasing 
the problem. The more you bring attention to what's wrong, the, if you picture it as two ends of one stick, right? Here's the problem on the left, here's the solution on the right. And if you're looking at the problem, you can't see the solution because it's in back of you at the other end of the stick. So yes, talk to your friends, but don't just rehash everything. Talk about, well, what's good about this? What can come out of this? What did I learn? What's the, like go, always go toward the positive. And yes, people will say, oh, you're just Pollyanna. Oh, but I'm a realist. No, you're not, sweetie. If you're going <laughs> to tell me you're a realist, you're a freaking pessimist there's no realist on the planet that is not a pessimist <laughs> reality is just what it is right now it's actually the past because by the time you've said it or experienced it it's in the past it's and who to say that you're not going to get a phone call two minutes from now that says hey you just won the lottery hmm. you don't know yeah I do I have learned that Things can literally change overnight, right? Because you, there are so many circumstances or events or situations that can happen or change. And so you do, having that positive hopefulness <laughs> is important because you just, you have no idea what's coming down the pike, right? And so, but, but it doesn't mean that it's always easy to do. It is, like you say, it's a practice. You have to do it every day. And I like your, your suggestion of just taking 60 seconds and nothing but positive thoughts and see if that can turn things around a little bit for you. And it actually I, I think it's great that you are always able to see the positive side of things as well. I mean, I don't, don't get me wrong. I have my moments, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it takes 16 seconds to get any momentum going. And if you've got it going in the wrong direction, you've got to stop it as fast as you can. And the best way is a nap or meditating because then you're slowing things down and you can actually get yourself back. You've slowed the momentum down of what's wrong and moved into, okay, well maybe this, and just be, so many people think the law of attraction is what they need to do, but it's actually the law of allowing that they need mm -hmm. to do. So law of attraction, people are thinking, oh, well, I have to think about what I want. No, not necessarily. Because if you're thinking about what you want, there's two sides to that. There's a side of feeling the lack of having it and the side of wanting it, of feeling like you have it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you are, you have to use your feelings as the guide. If you're unhappy when you think of it, don't think of it because you're blocking it, because you're focused on the lack of it. Everything in our reality is two sides, everything. There's dichotomies everywhere. There's hot and cold. There's joy and, and sorrow or, joy, or you know, there's it, everything here is a dichotomy. So no matter what you think of, there's two sides to it. And if you're activating the wrong side or both sides, it's going to be harder to allow it. So Love allowing is what you need to focus on. Mm -hmm. And that's not the one that gets all the publicity, but the law of allowing is simply getting yourself happy. Essentially, it's your gauge. If the happier you feel, the more you're going to allow in. Um, it's basically you're lining up with your energetic self. Your energetic self is always at that point. And anytime you're not happy, you're not in alignment. So when you get happy, you become into alignment and everything is allowed to flow. And if you look at it another way, because I've had people say, oh yeah, well, it, that's, it doesn't work. Well, okay, it doesn't matter. If you're going to get into alignment, which means you're feeling happy, who cares if it works? You're already happy. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, it's interesting that you, it's interesting that you point that out because when I, I was doing a search on you to find out a little bit more about you and I came across another, <laughs> yes, another, another Heather Abbott. Oh who yeah. Happened to be, yeah. Who happened to be in that Boston marathon when the bomb went off and she yeah. lost a leg and she has now uh, formed a foundation helping people with unnatural limbs or artificial limbs to, to that. So what you're saying is actually 
um, really well represented by what this other Heather Abbott is doing is that she's taking this tragedy where most people think, oh, my leg is gone. You know, my life is so different now. I can't do this. I can't do that. But she's actually turned it to a positive where she was able to see now what she could do, what was possible that was always possible, but now it's more driven. She's more driven to do what was always possible. She just didn't realize that she could do it. So it's a good name. It, it's yeah, a it's a really good name. <laughs> and, it, and see you. Okay. She lost a leg. She's got a leg. Right. Like my father, bless him. He's, he's in his eighties. He's legally blind. Now his knees are shot. He's covered in psoriasis. He's got heart issues. And when I go out there and he's, I say, how are you dad? He says, uh, not very good. I'm like, you're good. Awesome. <laughs> I'm ignoring all the negative. The universe ignores the negatives. Why should I pay attention? And I will actually just, I keep at him and, and I'm like reminding him. It's like of all these things and he will feel better before I leave or yeah. You know, yeah. It's just, it's all yeah. in how you look at it. Life. I have, there's a poem I remember life is what you make it so make it bright and true and if to you it's gloomy it's not the world it's you mm. I don't know who that's by but it pops in my head all the time sounds like something we would have learned in school as kids <laughs> I don't know I I had I had posters with um always have a dream and different things on it like yeah. and fairies <laughs> so how important is it then <clears throat> to have this feeling of positivity and also to have money? Well, if you have the feeling of positive positivity, likely you will have money. If you have money and you no, don't have positivity, you don't have the joy, you may still hold the money. It's, it's not a key because some people just get so determined to have it. Um, uh, and and but it's out of a different emotion uh you've you've seen these people it's like i'll prove to you that I, and you know but they get it but they're not enjoying life so it's it, it's different things to different people is and i on my show that's why i call it prosperity and possibilities because prosperity is joy and wealth right so it is very important to have clarity about what your numbers are and those things so that you know what you can spend. And that applies to every income level. I've seen doctors go bankrupt. There's actors, you've, mm -hmm. we've all heard of them, right? And we're all saying, yeah, poor you. <laughs> right. A lot of, a lot of um, I think NFL and, and people like that, they're done their career and they're broke mm -hmm. because nobody taught them the very basics and you don't learn it even when I became an accountant or a financial advisor they don't teach it they don't and I'm trying to get it out there and I am getting it out there and it will spread and I will have people educated so they know what their means level is and they know what they can and cannot afford and then you fix it and the way that you fix it obviously you either have to make more money or have fewer expenses hmm. So what should someone look for then in the financial advisor if they don't teach you, if they're not teaching the financial advisors how to manage money? Well, what? see, people look at managing money differently. Okay. To a financial advisor, that means how to invest it properly. How to invest it, make more of it, right? I'm talking about understanding what you can and cannot afford. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And if you want to learn that, well, go get my freebie, then you can do it yourself. It walks right there. Might be a good time to talk about that. <laughs> Maybe explain to us a little bit more about this prosperity mindset, right? What define that for us? What is because you you kind of hit it on it. Being happy doesn't mean you're wealthy, and being wealthy doesn't mean you're happy. And no. you know, you you described some of the billionaires in this world. They have they have all the money because they obsess about acquiring all that money, right? I mean, that's and I've heard it said. I've heard it said more than once that if you were to take all the money in the world and evenly distribute it, it would still end up back where you took it away from because that's what these people think about. That's just acquiring more, acquiring more. What can I do to get more? 
Well, if you think about it, have, have you ever played a video game where like L Zelda that has hearts that, but you can only collect as many hearts as you have containers for it? So like it, when you start, you may only have three containers, you can only have three hearts and then you can earn more containers. More containers right. So you may have nine hearts, but there's a maximum number of hearts you can have because you only have so many containers. It's like that with your wealth. If your container is really tiny, you can't have more wealth. You have to fix that in your mindset. That's your mindset. And that could be set by um, parents, society. If you're cursing the rich people, if you're saying that they're um, selfish and they make their millions on the back of everybody else, you're not going to become one because you don't right. like them. And you're not going to become somebody you don't like. So it, you have to create the container for the wealth. And that's why if somebody wins a lottery, that they are likely statistically to not have any of that money left in three years, they'll be back where they were because they didn't stop, not spend the money and then go and fix it so that they could build those containers in their mindset so that they could mm. keep it. They're like, oh, I can treat this person. I can buy this for this person, this for this person. Boop, 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 boop. Go on, ready to go. <laughs> like the bucket, water bucket with a hole in it. And that's actually how I describe some of my clients. They're, they have a lot of money coming in, but their bucket's full of holes. So they're feeding the weeds under the bucket and we need to plug the holes so that the water will flow over the top so they can aim it where they want it to go, mm. right? So not knowing your numbers is it's building your house on a foundation that's not solid this is the solid foundation stone so you can have it and never worry about it and still have money one of my clients she's um she's a millionaire and when she came to me she's like I, I, we were having a discussion about wording um and i said well wouldn't successful business women already have their money things together she's like nope nope <laughs> nope, I'm a millionaire and I am totally irresponsible. She didn't want to look at where the money was going because she's very good at bringing it in. It flows, right? Law of attraction. And it was just, oh, I don't have much money. Boom, Boom. made more. Yeah. But she, she, at the same time, she had to pay a $50,000 penalty for not filing something on time, right? Like these were normal things that would happen because she wasn't looking. And when I got her to realize, well, if you're not looking, there's already a rock in the stream. Hmm. So if we look at it, we can pull it out and get rid of it. And then it's going to flow even better. And yeah, it's, it's now she's looking at the numbers and she, I mean, you don't have to do the calculations yourself. If you're in business, you can hire a bookkeeper, you can hire all these people, but you still have to talk to them and get them <laughs> to explain what it's, what's going on to you. Cause I have seen people literally, oh no, I have a bookkeeper and they never look at the books. Yeah. And then they take all the books from the bookkeeper and pass them to the accountant at tax time. And they don't look at the taxes. They just get it back. And it's like, oh, that's what I owe. Okay. And I would force people, I would not give them their taxes back until I went through it with them. Line by line. Because I knew once I let them out the door, they were never going to look. And that's a horrible way to do business. And it's horrible for your personal finances too. Mm. So that, so all of that is what you can help people to do. So it's not just the positivity of the mindset it's not just the starting of the savings and starting to find those containers that get a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger but it's learning how to manage it all how to make sure that you're knowledgeable about what's coming in and where it's going and what's needed for the next month or whatever um, and so do you work just with women or do you work with men as well I work with men as well. Um, it just tends to be women. Um, it's just, I've got, it was hard for me to get started in this space because I have so much knowledge. But I mean, I started learning accounting in 1984. So <laughs> I've been an entrepreneur most of my life. And I have a lot of experience working with a lot of businesses. And to figure out 
how to niche down to what I could teach people. And people will say, well, can you help um, students and children with their finances? Yeah. Well, can you help businesses? Yeah. Can you <laughs> like, so there's <laughs> all the stuff, right? But I'm not focusing on giving people advice on how to grow their business, although I can. Um, I'm not focusing on um, the investments. I, I hate dealing with investments, to be quite honest. <laughs> but I, I have the knowledge. I've been a financial advisor, so I can teach you. But when you want more knowledge on a topic, I will say, okay, now it's time to bring in this person who I've met who's a specialist who deals with this type of investing. Like if you want real estate investing advice, I know some people that are really good at that. Let me bring them in. If you want um, advice on, a, you know, crypto or something like that, I would reach out to a specialist. Mm -hmm. So that's how I do it. But to me, the people I want to help are the ones who they want to get more control of their finances and then more happiness in their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then, and some, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Finish. Well, some, another group that I help are, are people who are just taking over finance, their finances. Sometimes it's young people who are, but sometimes it's um, older people. And you, those are usually women coming out of, uh, you know, becoming widowed or perhaps divorced. And they've never actually been in charge of the finances. So for them, it's a double whammy because they're dealing with the trauma and they're having to take over the finances and they don't know what to do. And I am able to bring, like, even though the knowledge is up here, I know how to speak to people that don't have the knowledge, which is a skill in itself. When you <laughs> Well, you have that story and that's exactly where I was going to go was I'm sure you attract, attract women that are in abusive relationships let's just call it for what it is because it's a real thing and they are scared and they don't have the financial ability to get out of it right they, they feel trapped so that's that's probably a huge group of your clients but so what do you say to that person that is in that exact situation somebody who's in uh, an abusive relationship or in a relationship that they're they're financially they don't know how to handle finances they don't have that cash flow and they want to get you know and but they feel stuck well for instance i'll give you a, an actual situation i have a friend who after probably 40 something years of marriage her husband had a stroke and he was the one that always took care of the bills and the finances that she had never done any of that. Now, all of a sudden he is mentally unable to do that and she's got to take it all on. So how do you, how do you start teaching someone like that, how to work your system? Well, if I had my book published, I'd say to start there. <laughs> That's right. You've got a book coming out, don't you? We'll okay. talk about that too. You I've got a book I'm writing. That book hits the streets. When that book hits yeah, the streets. It, it's actually financial empowerment for women, how to understand and evaluate your finances and your financial advisor. So mm -hmm. it's a really important one, but I haven't got it written yet. So I've, got <laughs> it, I've got it outlined. I've got a couple chapters, but I haven't finished it yet. So I, I, I do need to put some more work onto it but for them you need to take it down to a really basic level because they are so overwhelmed and if you look on Amazon for books oh my god I get overwhelmed because I look at them and I'm like oh that's what's that about and I'm like, do I not know that and then I'll click on it it's like oh okay they're just talking about it but there's so many titles and it sounds like there's so much to learn mm. and as soon as you get that because I mean having been there and I can only imagine if it was someone who you actually are going to miss that died and I don't know which is worse because I was also the for me the main trauma was the 25 years of abuse right so I was trying to cope with all that because a woman coming out of that relationship, we're a mess. Shake a bottle of champagne, pop the cork, and you see that you and out. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> that's our yeah. brain, our mental capacity. We're screwed. <laughs> but then on the other hand, you have true heartbreak. So I think either way, you just you can't deal with anything. I didn't want to open mail for six months, mm. right? 
So for them, I try to keep it on a level where, and I, I compare it to a mechanic, right? So if you, all the woman ever did was drive the car and the husband was the one who took care of everything. Well, number one, if she doesn't know to put gas in it, it's not gonna run. Number two, if she doesn't know that there's oil that needs to be checked, the engine's gonna seize. But I'm not going to go in and say, okay, so this is how you change your oil. And that's what a lot of people are doing. They're taking, well, this is how you invest. And these are these investments. Mm. And she doesn't need that. She needs to know, what do I need to know? Like just the basics. What do I need to know so that I can just get a handle on this and know, okay, so that's another thing I could learn later. That's another thing I can learn later. But right now I need to know, okay, there's a mechanic I can go take my car to him and he'll change the oil. I don't need to deal with that part. Right. Right. So it's, it's keeping it as basic as possible One because it's overwhelmed. Time. So do you see your clients once a week then? Is that how you help them? Is it a, is it a weekly situation? It, it varies on what they need. Mm. Um, and the support is, is it, it varies with the client. So, yeah. So tell us about your book. What's your book going to be about? And, and uh, what, what do you think will be in the book? Well, that's basically the book, the the financial okay. empowerment for women. Um, oh, I haven't looked at the outline in a, since June. Um, Are you going to share your personal story in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I have to. Um, yeah, and I mean, it is kind of an attention getter if you start off a book with, uh, did you know it's way easier to have someone shoot themselves three feet in front of you than to be mentally <laughs> abused? Yeah, I experienced both, and only one gave me nightmares. Yeah, wow. Well, so stories that will attract people. I mean, it's it's yeah. a way they have of identifying with <clears throat> with you, the author, and your solution, right? I mean, that's just. And that's also, cool. one of the issues I have is people raising their hand and saying, "Yeah, I have trouble with my finances because they they I I didn't want to like." I was an accountant and a financial advisor and I was broke. Like you think I could let people mm -hmm. know that, right? So there's, mm -hmm. there is a shame in there, right? Like you don't want people to know or when people will come to me and be like, oh, but you wouldn't understand. And I'm like, I'll tell them about those credit cards. Like, yeah, no, sweetie, I've been there. I, I sat I there and cried when they said I had to start paying my student loan back that I, it didn't qualify for the loan relief anymore. I've been there done that like it's you know it's it's hard but I've also had it where you know there's lots of money in the bank and I'm going to help you and I can do this and oh I want to go in here and I, so it's I've got both ends of the spectrum and mm -hmm. the in-between and the mental journey and everything so and honestly I wouldn't change any of it because I am who I am and the people I can help is because of everything they went through before all the things that happened so Very and it's nice. compounded when there's kids involved too right i mean oh yeah because yeah. now so let me understand this your your husband of who abused you for 25 years commit suicide in front of you yeah my goodness and how Pretty old were your children at the time uh i think 21 and 18 Okay. Um, or maybe, maybe a year older than that, maybe 22 and 19. Um, my son was done school. Um, I think he'd been done for, yeah, he'd been done school for a year. So he was 19, almost 19. And my daughter was 22. She was living on the other end of the country, your coast. She was in BC. Um, they both, they both disliked him. Um, oh, really? Now, Dominic is very much like me. He's very easygoing. So Mike didn't know how much Dominic didn't like him. But I mean, we'd be sitting on the couch watching TV. We'd see him pull in the driveway and Dominic would be, see ya, and up to his oh. room, right? So, yeah. And I didn't realize that they had both been concerned about him killing all of us. I did not know that. That was, that was sucky to find out. I knew my daughter. Was he their father or? Yeah. He was, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Tragic. 
but you know they, they, these are the stories that make us that much better and looking for the solution and helping people right heather i mean yeah that would be a huge benefit we only have about four minutes left is there anything that we're missing heather i sure hope you'll come back i i think there's a lot more to talk about and we want to see your book that's for sure I would love to come back. You guys are amazing. I can see why you have such a viewership. You guys have this great interaction and energy. I love it. Well, tell us about your programs. What, how can someone get a hold of you to begin working with you? What does that look like? Basically, to get to work with me, you have to get on a call with me. And if we don't work together, you will still come out of that call with more knowledge than you came into it. I guarantee it because the call is about giving you value. Mm -hmm. So there are links on my website um, to book a call with me. Uh, there is the booklet that I gave you guys for a freebie. And actually, if you would like, I am doing um, November 9th, I have a mini class that is walking you through that system of getting the clarity with your numbers. It's three hours long. It's on Eventbrite for 300, but if you use the code MYGIFT, M-Y-G-I-F-T, all capitals, you can get it for free. That's um, Whoa. Financial Clarity oh. for Prosperity. Can we I put will that in our newsletter? Jackie, you did can. You that? Yes, yeah. you can. And, that's, and they can find that on your website? That's on Eventbrite. It's not Eventbrite. on my website. Basically, Eventbrite. there's no replay. Uh, you have to be there to get it. Uh, but if you sign up, if you if you know you can't make it and you sign up, I if I do it again, I will email you. I, I'm sending everyone a, an email directly because I don't trust Eventbrite. <laughs> 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 they screwed up before. And I'm also I, I'm giving out a PDF version of the spreadsheet that I use so they can start filling it in ahead of time and if they want to. Um, and that way they can come with questions. So uh, yeah, if you would like to come, that's that's my oh, gift. And if you have students that you want them to learn any of this, by all means, send them send them along. Don't that's worry about that link, Jack. You'll have it in the newsletter. If you're not getting the newsletter, well, just go sign up for the newsletter, and then you'll get it. There you go. It's a good motivation. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thank you for showing up as you. Did you have a blast today? Was in the I show did. Oh my God, this is so great. Thank you for calling me and telling me where are you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that's joining us? Like, that's like why we like to connect before the show. Thank you again, my dear, for showing up as you and bringing such a great message. And we want to see that book. So you finish that. If you need help with that, I know somebody. I know oh, somebody. do you? Coach Debbie. Google mm -hmm. Coach Debbie. That's my girlfriend. And she helps people. She helps people get the book that's in them out of them. So if you need what I'm help. actually, I have a chance to win a $10,000 Hay House publishing contract, and I would love to be a Hay House author. Yeah. So, um, she she works that. with Alan Cohen. Do you know who Alan Cohen is? Isn't he a singer? No, Hay House author, like 23 books. Okay, that's why I know the name then. Yeah, because I tend to know everything. Anyway, okay. that's about all we have time for today. Jackie, any quick takeaways? Nope. Thanks, Heather. It was great. There's so many women that need your support right now because of the pandemic and men as well, but mostly women feel less empowered when they're faced with finances. With the finances, yeah. 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 That's Thank about you. all we have time for today. I hope you heard something that will perk up your ears and allow you to go and check out Heather or check out like masteryradio.com or .net. The links are all there. And lastly, here's the deal. Please, please, please make it a great day because it is all about choice. Bye-bye for now. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Life Mastery with Todd Allen, the talk radio show that dives into the science of higher consciousness. Join Todd and his guests weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific time and learn how to live a peaceful life. For more information on Todd and his guests, visit his website at www.lifemasteryradio.net. That's www.lifemasteryradio.net.